Hey everybody, so today I want to go through a transition from a, a TV show that we've been watching called uh, Upload. It's a sort of a title sequence that also serves as a transition. So let me walk through all the elements. So first we start off with one clip, what I'll be referring to as our old clip. Then we blur that clip out, and then we start bringing in our title sequence here, and we do this reveal on this title sequence here. And you'll notice as I'm slowly scrubbing the slider here, that, that text is kind of, kind of creeping forward as we do this reveal. And if you look behind, there's our, our, what I'll call our new clip. There's a clip that we're transitioning to. So as we go forward, we do our full reveal of the title. And then we do, at this point here, we do sort of this very quick zoom. And, you know, sort of in this frame here, we're essentially looking through this O in this case, and we're sort of transitioning from one world to another inside to this clip here. So if you take a look, I'll just go frame by frame, and then we're in our new clip here. So I think it's a very clever technique in that it serves a couple different purposes. First, it shows the title of the, of the particular show, but also this technique is often used to transition between sort of different worlds. So for example, in this particular show, there's the real world and then there's the virtual world. So this transition here might be going from the first few minutes of the show might be sort of based in the real world. Then they show this very quick title sequence and we transition sort of through the text into the virtual world. So here we are in Fusion, and I just want to go over sort of the main blocks, and I use these underlay blocks here to kind of organize things. So very briefly, here's the sections that we're sort of dealing with. There's our main text nodes over here. There's our mask, which is a mask based on these text nodes here. There is this clip transition, which brings us from the old clip to the new clip. Then we merge everything together, and we go into our output. One thing to take note of is those green line, these green lines are instances. So in this case here, we have this new clip here, which is a media in node. You follow this green line over to here. I've named this I underscore new clip, meaning instance underscore new clip. And I'll talk a little bit later about what instances are and how we and how we create them and how we manage them. Okay, so let's pull this down here, and we'll just we're just going to focus on some blocks one by one. So I'll bring up my two up screen here. So over on the right, I'll keep our final output, which is our media out node. I've just called out, and over here we're going to look at these individually. So let's take a look at sort of the output of this here, which would be our main text merge. So what that is effectively, it is our main text, which is just this upload here, and it's all in black. It points into this new clip here, and it's going into the mask node, the effect mask node, into this new clip. And this new clip is what we're going to be transitioning to, so that's the surfer clip, that's the one that we're going to end up with. So when I bring up this new clip and put it up here, we see the, te the text mask applied to this new clip. Then what I've done down here is I've taken this main text and I've done an instance of that main text and I've brought it down here. And I, I'm going to go through this in a bit more detail later but I just want to give a, a sort of high level overview right now. So I take this main text node and I bring it up to here. What you can see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, so what you can see here is this gray outline that we have on the text. And if I bring the main text back up here, you'll notice there's no outline on that. So it's just, so the purpose of this main text outline is really just to show that particular outline. And the reason I separated this main text and the main text outline is really because of how I wanted to show things sort of underneath this mask, and, I, and I'll get into that in a little bit. And then finally over here we have our main text merge, which brings everything together. I'm going to zoom out a little bit again here. So at this point here, we have our full text with the outline, we have our mask set up, and we can see the new clip underneath. So if you keep focused just on this main text merge over here on the left, when I sort of scrub through things, all it's really doing is very subtly changing the size of the text. And you'll notice because of the instances that, that I've set up that the outline is tracking the size of the original text. Okay, so let's look at, take a look at this block down here. This is our main text mask nodes. So this here is going to be used as a mask that we're going to apply later. You know what, I'm going to change my naming convention a bit because the way I have it set up, there's the main text. This main text outline is actually an instance of this. And this is actually an instance of this. So we have sort of these nested instances. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my naming convention sort of on the fly here. I'm going to call this II for sort of two instances. I'm going to call this one here I underscore. So whatever naming convention works for you. So we'll take a look at this here, this double instance main uh, text outline, and I'm going to bring it up here. And what that is is um, basically combining a mask of these two parts here, so the inner text as well as the outline. Now if you take a look over here, we have this sort of wipe that's going on from left to right as we sort of scrub through as the text is revealed. So the way we do that is down here. So I have this rectangle mask, which all it is is just plain old rectangle. If you take a look over time, all I'm doing is taking that mask and just 
wiping it from left to right. And you'll notice here I have a little bit of blur. I've just kind of softened this edge a little bit between these two domains here. Then I'm using this black background. So when that black background is combined with this mask, now this sort of matches what you see here. So you can imagine picture this where this O is cut off. This is where the black mask is. And if we kind of move things back and forth, then you can sort of see the full effect. So now when I take this text outline here, and this black wipe here, and I combine them with this merge, I end up seeing just the text that I want to see. So what we've created here by this mask merge, essentially is this mask here, and this mask changes over time and is revealed over time by this sort of wiping sequence over here. So the reason I wanted to do that is what that allows me to do by having this mask here that follows the animation of the text, I then pipe that into my final merge when I want to merge my two clips together. So we'll come back to this final merge in a second. Let's take just a look over here at this clip transition part over here. So here I have an instance of our new clip, and here is the old clip that we're transitioning from. So effectively what I do is I just do this merge. So let's take a look at this merge here. And right now, depending on where we are, we're just showing the old clip. And then somewhere up around here, around frame 180, 170, 180, we transition to the new clip. So the purpose of this merge here, it's just acting like a switch essentially. So somewhere up here, all it does is it just transitions from this old clip into the new clip. And as I explain things in a little detail, it'll become evident as to why I sort of chose things uh, to do things that way. And then we also have our blur. So if I bring this blur up here, this is the blur of our original clip. So we start off, we can sort of see things. Then we, we quickly blur out. We're blurred for the majority of the sequence. And then as we switch to the new clip, I take that blur off. So there's a very abrupt switch between the clips as well as I turn this blur off here because we want to sort of work in this new, new domain now. So then we come down to this merge control. So what this merge is doing, if I just give us a little more space here. This merge is going to combine our sort of three worlds. It's going to combine our text up here. So remember what our text looks like. This is our text with our, with our new clip embedded. Over here, we have our old clip. So now we want to put these on top of each other. And that's where this mask comes in because I'm doing a merge between this and this, but I want to use this effects mask as basically tracing sort of the outline of this and using that to do our merge. So when we take a look at our final merge, or really our, our output, we have all the elements combined. Okay, so now let's really dig into the details. So we'll start off with this main text nodes here. So I'll put main text up here. Uh, main text is completely black because we're gonna be using that um, as a mask essentially. So I'll come up over here and I will click check underlay. And so now we just see the black mask. So the font that I've chosen for this one here is um, Abrima it's called so I just sort of went through fonts it's not the actual font that's used in the TV series it's one that's close enough there's some websites you can basically just cut and paste a picture of any font and it'll sort of figure out what what its closest fonts are so I did that with the, the actual upload uh, font from the TV series and you know it would have cost me 30 bucks or something to buy the actual font so to me the font doesn't really matter it's interchangeable it's more of the principles that we were, that we're concerned about. And so for this tutorial, I'm not going to rebuild everything sort of from scratch. I'm really just going to go through the inspector and say, here's the things that I've changed. And then I will put the Fusion Composition up on Google Drive that you can download and you can do with it what you want. Let me know if that format works for you or not. I think it, uh, you know, going through everything and sort of building things up step by step with something that's kind of a little bit larger like this might just be a little bit exhausting. So I'd rather just sort of hit the highlights. I'm also linking all my other videos throughout this video, my fundamentals videos. So it's always recommended to check out those fundamentals videos if there's something here that you don't understand. I'll be going over some of the concepts if it's quick to explain, but some of the other stuff I might just sort of skip over and, and just it's assumed you know that. So we have our main text here, and then we're looking at that up here. And so if you come down here, you'll notice the size control. This size control here is animated. So, and let's bring up the spline editor over here, and I'm going to click on size, and I'm going to go uh, size to fit. And so you'll look over here from frame 10 or so up to frame 160, 165. It's really just slowly increasing in size. Very slowly, it's just sort of creeping forward. I also do um, this animation here on uh, the X and the Y, the center position. So I'm gonna click on, and it's just the X. Y doesn't actually do anything. So if I click on X, and I'm gonna turn off size for now. So if I click on X, You'll notice up here at frame 167, I changed the X value just ever so slightly. So why I did this is I wanted to actually zoom through a letter. 
And if I come and I take this and I put it back to normal, you'll notice I'd sort of be zooming into here. And I want to zoom sort of right in the middle here. So that's what I've done to sort of make sure that I go right through. It looks visually like we're going right through this sort of chunk of the O. And to do that final quick zoom that we're sort of doing through here, I didn't just do a size increase. I actually used a bit of a different uh, technique here, and that's the center Z here. So what that is... So what this control here, center Z is, if I come up to this tab here, it basically controls how uh, close or far this is from the camera. So we start off over here and then the text basically just races towards the, the camera. And I say camera in quotes, there's no actually actual 3D camera in this, it's just the implied 2D camera that we're talking about. So that's main text, there's not much to it. There's also this new clip over here, so I'll put the new clip over here. So all that's really happening now is we're using this main text and we're just putting that in, in the effects mask and we're essentially combining that with the clip. So that's how you get this sort of see-through here. So just this on its own is, is a pretty straightforward technique you can use just to sort of get this, this kind of cut out. Then we come down to our instance here, I main text uh, underscore outline. So what I did is I created an instance of this text and I put this instance down here. And the point of this instance here, if you look real close here, I'm going to... I'm going to bring the main text up over here on the left and then I have this text outline over here on the right and I'm going to zoom in and we're both zoomed into 314% so, so, we're, so we're sort of equal there. And the only difference here is I have this gray outline set up. And to set up that gray outline, so now I have my eye main text selected, I come over here into shading and element number one is enabled that represents this inside black chunk here. If I come to select element number two, I have element number two, it's called red outline, but, I, but I've changed the color to it. It's this color down here, this sort of greeny gray color. And I've enabled the outline here. So my thickness right here is controlled by this parameter here. So very briefly, without going into details, these select elements allows, allow you to do a bunch of things like drop shadows, outlines, all that type of stuff. And the reason I had to break it out into these two sections here is because this main text here is asking is acting as a mask, and I'm, and I just want to use this for 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 its masking purposes. And this here is sort of a different purpose. I'm using this to sort of show the outline because it's set up as an instance. When I change the size of this main text, so I'll come back here and I'll go to size. You'll notice the outline is going to follow along. So that's the advantage of having it set up as an instance. So I'm just going to do an undo there. So then we come in and we bring our final merge. And that's our final outputs. Okay, so let's look at the section down here. I've called it main text masks, uh, mask nodes. So, so what that is, so let me take this uh, instance up here. I'm going to go through this instance chain in a second to explain it a little bit further. But I'm going to pull this one up here, and, and this here is essentially this black upload here. Um, then we'll take a look at this mask for, for wipe. Essentially, this is just the rectangle that I'm wiping across. So this white part here is a rectangle, this is a rectangle node. And when you put that into this black background, this black wipe is a black ground node, it kind of inverts things. And this is the part that's being masked off. And when I combine things under this mask merge, it sort of chops things off here. So this is all pretty straightforward down here, but how does this instance chain kind of work? So as we said before, this here is an instance of this, this is an instance of this. And the only thing that I'm changing here when I go to de-instance certain parameters is I'm looking, if I go up to this main text outline, the only things I'm, I'm de-instancing are these uh, enables here. So all I've done from this node down to this node is essentially de-instance this second element so I can turn this second element on, which is the outline, and that doesn't affect the outline in this main text. So if I come over here and I go to element two, this is not enabled. So these black letters here are really these two effectively combined. So it's the inside of the letters as well as that gray outline, but now I've just changed that gray outline to black. That's really the idea because I want to have this here basically cover the full text that's created between the combination of these two elements here. So in terms of de-instancing down here, if I come over to here, I have my second element enabled, which is the outline, and I've also de-instanced the color values down here so I can change this to black. Remember, this was this element two was that greeny gray outline from up here. So if I click on this, you see the color over here is that greeny gray. I come back over here, and we've changed it to black. So I've de-instanced these values here. And to de-instance a color, I can't come up here and right-click on color. I can come up on any other of these parameters. I can right-click, and I can come down and say de-instance. But if I want to 
de instance colors. I have to come down to these actual colors here, and I can right click on red, for example. And it shows up as reinstance right now because it's already been deinstanced. And I can reinstance the whole color group, so I can do RGB and alpha all at once. And that same option is available when I do deinstance in here. So I can either deinstance just a single red, green, or blue, or alpha channel, or I can do them all at once. So that's all that's done in terms of deinstancing down here. So the point of this here is to take up the full space that the two of these combined take up. And then we bring it into our merge here. And our final merge is, is, is what we see up here. Now as far as that wipe, so I click on this and I come up to the spline editor. And it's the x value that I'm dealing with here. So each of these stair steps that you see is a, is a reveal of some letters. So we reveal a bunch of letters real quick, then we kind of chill out for a bit. Reveal another chunk. Reveal a final chunk. And a little bit more. So this here I basically took sort of the reference video that I had and, and, and kind of copied that. So I just made the reveal look sort of as close as possible. So it sort of does this thing where it just does a few letters at a time. So if we go and we take a look at our clip transition over here. First we have our old clip. And the old clip is this background clip. Nothing fancy here. This thing is just sort of playing along. I also have this I underscore new clip and we see the green instance line that's instance from my original new clip. And the reason I did that is because if I take a look at this new clip here and I bring it up, it's sort of been masked already. I don't want to see that. This is my final clip. This is the one that I'm going to be showing at the end of the screen after we transition through the letters. So I want a full clip that has no mask essentially put into it. So I've just made an instance of that clip and it's just sort of bare bones. So if I take a look at this clip and bring it up here, it's the, it's the full clip. This here is a merge node. So let's take a look at our clip merge and I'm gonna bring this up sort of single screen here. So if you come down and look at this blend, all this blend do, does, and this blend is, is, is part of this merge node here, is just blends the two inputs, the yellow and the green input, to any degree that we want. So I can just sort of blend the two together. But I'm not really using it as a blend, I'm using it as a switch, so it's very discreet. It's on and then it just switches right to the next clip. So if I were to play this clip through, we're on this record clip here, and as soon as it comes to here, it's going to switch very abruptly over to the other clip. So that's it there. And we'll come back up to here, and I'm going to bring this blur node up here. If I select this blur, and I go look at blur size, here's what the profile looks like here. So we're back to frame zero, and we're going to let this play here. So we're going to very quickly ramp up on the blur. So now we're fully blurred. And again, we're going to drop off the cliff. This is the same time when we transition clips because I don't want the new clip to be blurred. So that's all there is to this clip transition section. And again, we come to our final merge. So we're going to be merging our main text and we're going to be merging this blur. And we're just really going to superimpose this on top of this. And we do that uh, with this node here. And we use this here as our mask. And that mask is what's responsible for sort of that text reveal. And then we have our final output. So if you do decide, and I do recommend you download the, the Fusion Composition because it's probably easier to load that Fusion Composition up first and then if you want to go through this tutorial you can kind of just um, you know sort of go into the nodes instead of going and have to, to, to sort of set everything up. There's not a lot of changes that I made in those nodes but it, it's probably worth bringing down the composition just to, to make sure you're sort of getting things right and, and just to make sure that I haven't missed explaining anything. So what you'll want to do though because the clips, you know, if I, if I were to go look at this new clip for example um, it's it's tied to one of my specific videos here. So I have my media in nodes here. I have this new clip uh, and the new clip instance, and then I have the old clip. So what you can do instead of sort of you know when you bring in a fusion composition, it's not going to rec recognize these clips because you don't have those those clips necessarily. So you'll probably want to use your own clips. Um, the, the the best way to do that you can you can delete these and sort of bring in new clips, but then you have to reinstance this one over here and and so on and so on. So what you can do is just go to your media pool. Um, I have some sort of free clips up here. I'm just going to bring one down here. Just drag in a media in node, and then you can just copy the, the media ID over here. Uh, copy that and paste it into here, and then that should sort of snap back into place with your video. So thanks so much for checking this out. I was, I was doing a little bit of playing around with some sort of zooms and stuff with this video. It's not completely how I want to get it. Um, hopefully it makes things a little bit easier to see, but I'm still going to be working on that over my next video. So any comments on that, on things that... Uh, would make it easier to understand. If you find we're skipping over too much in the name of brevity, uh, please let me know and I'll, and I'll go back to sort of uh, my old style of, of, of sort of very carefully going through each step. 
In any case, thanks so much for checking this out. I appreciate it, and we will talk to you soon.